so today we're going to finish the cardiovascular system part two. Sorry, it was on the wrong slide. And so we're going to talk about blood pressure. Now on the last C notes, I'd ask you to um, tell me which blood vessel you felt had the highest blood pressure and why. And so today we're going to answer that question. So let's talk about what blood pressure is. Blood pressure is the pressure that blood exerts on the walls of a blood vessel. Now, if you've ever, you know, gone with your mom or your dad to the pharmacy and you're bored, you always want to put your arm in that machine where it closes up really tight. It's measuring your blood pressure. Because our heart is such a powerful and the strongest muscle in our body, when it is pumping, it is pushing that blood out into our blood vessels at such a rate that it does have pressure against it. And so the uh, machine tightens up on our arm to read the blood pressure when it rushes through the vessel. So it is caused by the force with which the ventricle contracts. As blood moves away from the heart, its pressure decreases. So just think about that. The closer a blood vessel is to the heart, then obviously the higher the blood pressure. So the answer is that arteries have the highest blood pressure. Once it is leaving that um, left ventricle, it is hitting the aorta. The aorta is the largest artery in your body and therefore has the largest um, smooth muscle around the wall because it's going to have to deal with a lot of pressure. If the wasn't able to handle it and it would rupture, then you would start having internal bleeding and blood wouldn't get to all, all your cells, which means oxygen and glucose wouldn't get there either. So as you move farther away from the heart to the capillaries, to the veins, the blood pressure decreases. Um, and this is an instrument that measures your blood pressure. So let's talk about blood. Blood is made up of four components, plasma, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. 55% of your blood is plasma. It is actually the fluid part. And so whenever you donate um, plasma, you know, you've, if you've ever heard of donating blood, you can donate plasma. They're going to spin it to separate the blood by densities, kind of like you see in this picture here. The plasma being the fluid part is always the most uh, lightweight and the least dense. So it rises to the top and they take the plasma and then insert the red blood cells back into your body. So plasma is the liquid part of blood. It is mostly water. 10% is made up of dissolved materials such as food molecules, vitamins, minerals for your blood, some waste products, and also some proteins. Red blood cells, which is what most people think of when they think of blood, these are, like I said earlier in the last video, these are the cars. These are what actually carry and transport oxygen to the blood cells. So all the blood vessels, like the arteries, the veins, the capillaries, those are all the highways, the streets, um, that kind of stuff. Well, the red blood cells are the cars, and the oxygen could be like the people. What makes red blood cells able to carry oxygen is a substance called hemoglobin, which is an iron-containing protein that binds chemically to oxygen molecules. So if you didn't have hemoglobin, you would not be able to bind oxygen. So therefore, iron is important for us to have in our body. And again, we already know that red blood cells are produced in the bone marrow, which is deep inside the bones. And these cells do uh, not have a nucleus because there's no need for a nucleus. They are filled up to the brim with hemoglobin. So even though we know that we are eukaryotic organisms and our cells do have a nucleus, red blood cell is an adaptation to, it doesn't really need a nucleus because it's just delivering. So let's talk about white blood cells. White blood cells are a part of your immune system. So here's another part where two systems are crossing and they help us to fight diseases. They're bigger than red blood cells, and they're also produced in the bone marrow. So think of Osmosis Jones. He's a white blood cell, right? He's a cop that helps to fight bad guys. He's a white blood cell that fights anything that enters our body, like germs and viruses. And they do have a nucleus. Platelets are cell fragments. And these are actually important because they help us to form blood clots. They collect and stick together at any site where a blood vessel is cut. So if you cut your finger and you start to bleed, platelets are going to come on and they're going to start sticking together to create a barrier and eventually it'll form into a scab. 
Platelets then release chemicals that cause the production of the chemical fibrin, which is what allows them to weave into the fibers and help to trap blood cells and have the clot form. So since we're talking about blood, let's get into blood typing. I don't know if any of you happen to know your blood type, and later on when we get into genetics, we'll definitely go into more detail. But there are four types of blood. There's type A, type B, type AB, and type O. Now these actually have to deal with proteins that your red blood cells have and the antibodies that they produce. Um, you can see that most Americans, 45% are O. I'm actually O positive, um, but my husband is A positive. And it was interesting because we didn't know what our daughter was going to be because my husband didn't know his blood, uh, blood type. But doing the Punnett square below, after I figured out that my daughter had A blood, we were able to figure out that he obviously had A blood. But like I said, we'll get into this a lot more when we get into genetics. So let's talk about some diseases. Cardiovascular diseases is the leading cause of death in the United States. Arthrosclerosis is a condition in which the artery walls thicken due to a buildup of fatty material. Now, you're thinking, well, arteries need to be thick so they can deal with the high blood pressure. But if they thicken too much and they're not going to be as flexible, they're not going to be able to bend, and not as much blood is going to be able to flow through it. It's kind of like getting a clogged sink. Water drains really slowly, and you don't want that. Heart attack, obviously, that's what most people tend to think of, occurs when blood flows and the part of the heart muscle is blocked and it's not going or directing that flow. Cells die in part of the heart that does not receive blood and this permanently damages the heart. If any part of our body goes too long without blood, then we are going to suffer consequences, sometimes little, sometimes extreme. Hypertension is a disorder in which a person's blood pressure is considerably higher than normal. Hypertension makes a heart have to work harder. It also may damage the walls and the blood vessels over time. So here's an example of like a blocked artery. You can see that it's starting to bulge because a lot of platelets and fat is building up. And so the heart is going to get damaged and cells are going to die. And then here's another picture of a vessel. As you can see, it's normal, kind of like a, a good cleaned uh, pipe or drain in your house compared to the arthrosclerosis where it starts to harden and thicken, making the blood have smaller area to flow through and it's going to have to push harder. And then there is also that hypertension like we talked about where you have that normal heart where also you can have thickening of the walls and the ventricle. And again, less space for the blood means it's going to have to pump even harder, which is what gives you that high blood pressure. So to help you uh, maintain health, you need to um, exercise regularly. That's why it's called cardio, to get your heart pumping, to get it pumping at that higher level. Eat a very balanced diet that's low in fat, cholesterol, and sodium, and avoid smoking. Smoking doesn't just affect your lungs. It can also affect your heart, too. Okay, so that's it, and we will um, discuss this tomorrow in class. Bye.